Hello everyone, my name's Omar. I'm joined by Michael on the team here. We're gonna be doing the beginner website content training webinar. Without further ado, let's go ahead and go to our topics list, the content we'll be covering today. Um, so this webinar is geared for members with the 60 editor access level and greater on designing website content for the website. Uh, we won't be going too much into the website live designer. Our advanced website content webinar will go into more detail about using the website live designer with some more uh, website content. But for now, we're going to be creating stories and links for the website and bulletins. So those stories can be put into bulletins using a widget, the website stories widget, and I'll show you guys that. Um, we'll also be adding public download files. Uh, download files are always public. And uh, once they're uploaded to the website, they do get a URL that can be used to share in emails and on other website stories. We'll also be creating a photo album, a collection of images on the website that'll appear on a photo album built-in page and can be linked to using the link editor tool. We'll also be adding private documents, but the documents can also be public. Um, so if you're looking for a way to upload private information that includes, say, a member's name or contact information, you can upload that as a private document. And finally, I'll be creating um, some calendar items as well as speakers to appear on our demonstration accounts calendar. Okay, so bear with me here. I'm just going to pause the share and switch over to our demonstration account. Sorry, Omar, while you're doing that, I did just want to note really quickly for everyone that the webinar is being recorded. So if you guys do have to step out for a little bit at, a, at any point, uh, we will be posting the recording of the webinar uh, later on throughout the week, the upcoming weeks, uh, as our team is able to go through and process them. And towards the end of the webinar as well, I will be hosting a quick Q&A session where I'll be going through and answering some of the more common questions that we do receive regarding this content. Uh, and I'll also be going through and answering a bunch of questions that you guys might have live as well. Uh, so if you do have any questions during the webinar at all, please feel free to post them in either the Zoom chat or the Zoom Q&A se um, section. Uh, and I'll be going through during the webinar and I'll be typing out answers to each of you. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to get those posted. Thank you, Michael. Yes, uh, please be sure to use that Q&A box. You'll see the button along the bottom of your Zoom webinar session. If you click that, you'll see the questions we've received from other registrants and you can post your questions and Michael will be assisting with any answers. And when we do the Q&A session closer to the end of the webinar, I'll also be reviewing those Q&A questions. So please submit them to us again um, in that Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom session. Thank you again. Uh, and thank you, Michael, for your note. Uh, thank you so much. Let's carry on. So I've pulled up my demonstration account, the Rotary Club of Greentown. I've already logged in, but because this is the beginner webinar, let me show you guys how you would log into your club website. So I'm just gonna log out here. Um, so if you pull up your Club Runner homepage in the top right, you're gonna see this member login link. If we click that link, you'll be brought to the member login form. From here, you can enter your user's username and then the password for your account. Oops, bear with me here, there we are. Perfect, and once you're successfully logged in, that member login link in the top right of the website will change to this member area link. And if we click that link, we'll be brought into the club's member area. So let's go ahead and click that link and get started here. So for the website content webinar, we'll be primarily working in the website module up here in the top blue bar. There is also the website dashlet from the dashboard. If we scroll down, we should see it just closer to the bottom here, website designer, website content. and this is all you can also use this website content dashlet to navigate to the story library, um, photo albums, download files, and so on. The documents should be stored in the uh, organization grouping, and we'll go through that using the top blue bar, um, the documents module, uh, or sorry, in the organization module, and then the documents list here. But to begin, let's go ahead and open up the website content module in the top blue bar. And then from the gray bar below, we're going to click website content. I do want to mention 
uh, you should have access to this website content menu starting from the editor 60-editor access level all the way up to 30 site administrator. I'm logged in with the site administrator profile because I'll be uh, just working quickly in the live designer to add um, the widget that posts the stories. So let's go ahead, click website content. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And once you click website content, you'll be brought to this page. Do note all of the content in this website content page is public. Um, so once it's uploaded, it is available on the website. It may not appear with a link, but if the visitors know the URL for the link, they'll be able to access the content. So do keep in mind, this website content area is public. The content you create will be displayed on the website. If you're looking for private, uh, a private document you're looking to upload, we can do that. Uh, it, we'll do that later in the webinar, but again, the organization documents list is where you can upload private documents with member information. And there is a way in the website live designer to make a custom page require login. So only members can view it. We want to be covering that in our webinar here, but we will be covering that in the website live designer webinar, I believe tomorrow. Um, okay, carrying on, let, let me take you guys to the homepage stories uh, list. And to do that from the website, Website, website content page, I can click homepage stories right here to open up the stories that, have, that are added to the homepage or from the library section here. I'm going to click libraries in this uh, left hand menu just to show you the other libraries in your database. So I've clicked the libraries. Immediately, you'll see the image library for where you can reference images on website stories. We will be adding an image. Um, photo album library where, we'll, where we will be adding a photo album. We'll, we'll, uh, there's also the links widget library. So if you guys are using links widgets on the website, this is where they can be managed. Similarly, if you guys were at our website live designer or club, or the role-based training where we showed off the website live designer, the global custom widgets are also stored here. We'll be working in the story library and in the stories, you can enable comments as well as story tags and you can manage that information here um, i'll be showing you guys how you can able enable comments for stories as well so let's go ahead and click story library and again there is a quick way to access this story library it's that website content and then if we click i've just clicked it and I'm just waiting for that getting started page again that's okay it'll bring us to the getting started page here shortly I'm going to pause the load. We've got the story library. It's that homepage stories link. I don't want to needlessly uh, bring you guys to new screens. We'll stay on the story library page. So the story library is a collection of all of the stories created on the club's website. Just below that story library page title, you'll see a few go to sections. One is the stories widget. So this stories widget is the stories that are added to your homepage homepage stories widget. I'll, I will click that widget. Let's go ahead and click that section. As soon as I click that section, I see that we get this note. Note that you currently have a maximum of three stories set to appear on the homepage. Um, so if we include more stories in this stories widget grouping, they will not appear unless we increase the maximum stories for the homepage stories widget. And, and what is the homepage stories widget? I hear some of you asking through your computer screens. I'm gonna go ahead and open up our homepage here by right clicking and then opening in a new tab. And coming back to our demonstrations account homepage, if I scroll down, here is the homepage stories widget. It's this club stories and projects widget. And currently it's set to only display three stories. This World Polio Day continues to grow, Rotarians report email scam, and then growing a future in Cape Town. If I go one more to the right, we return to the World Polio Day um, continues to grow. So if you're looking to include more stories in this widget, or you note that your club's website doesn't have a homepage stories widget, I'll show you guys how you can reach out to your administrators to add it and then adjust the maximum amount of stories. So leaving our live homepage, I'm gonna go back to the member area. And here is the stories widget grouping in our stories library. It's set to show five stories, but can only display the first three because that widget is limited. Let's go ahead and take a quick detour to the live designer. So in the top blue bar, I'm gonna click new website beta and then homepage designer. Uh, do note that 
members with the 30 site administrator access level are the only members who can access this homepage designer. Effectively, your website administrators are the only people who can access this homepage designer. Um, so I've opened up the homepage designer. If I scroll to the bottom, we can see the club stories and projects widget with the maximum three stories. I'm going to remove it from the page because I want to show you guys where you can bring it back if you have that 30 site administrator access. So I'm just going to click this X to remove the widget from the live designer to add the widget to your homepage. If you have that 30 site administrator access, the widget is in this content tab essentials grouping, and then this home page stories widget. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag the widget back onto the home page and then let go to drop it into place. It's back, but we still need to increase that limit. So I'm going to hover over this widget and access its widget properties by clicking this gear icon in the top right. So this will open up the home page stories widget properties. At the very top, there are some general settings like some padding as well as border color and thickness. Uh, most widgets have these general settings and we won't be going into too, too much depth in our website content webinar. This is mostly the website live designer. I just wanna show you guys the total items to display. So if I scroll to the very bottom of the widgets properties, we have this settings section. And here we have the items to display currently set to, to display three stories. I'm gonna increase that to six and to save the update, I can click this orange save button. Before I save the update, I do wanna mention the, the layout for our demonstrations accounts website stories widget is currently in this scrollable layout. I'm gonna show you guys the default layout that, that they appear as. So if I click the layout and then choose regular and then save the update, we'll see that change in the live designer. So I've saved the update and instead of the stories scrolling horizontally, they're now listed vertically down the page um, and we should be able to see five total stories. So I see one here growing a future in Cape Town, World Polio Day, report scam. And here are the other, uh, we raised the limit to six, so there should be up to six. So one, one more, we've got our fourth, our fifth, and if there was a sixth added to that uh, stories widget section in the library, it would also appear. I'm not happy with how long the widget gets when we set that limit, so I'm going to return it to the scrollable layout. And again, to do that, I'm going to hover over the widget in the live designer and click this gear icon in the top right. And again, scrolling to the very bottom of the properties, I'm going to use this layout drop down and then select scrollable and then click the orange button, uh, orange save button to save the update. There we are. Mind you, all of these changes we've made in the Live Designer have not been published to the home page until we click the orange publish button in the top right of the Live Designer. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the top and we can publish our changes with this orange publish button. Uh, I will publish, but before I do that, we're also going to be working on the home page photo albums or the photo albums. So I'm going to also add the home page photo albums widget we see here in the essentials category. And again, I'm just going to click and drag that widget, bring it to the left column, and I'm just going to plop it below the club executives list. There we are. And we can see the previously uh, set albums to display in the homepage photo albums widget. Pardon me. There we are. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, add a story to this, which we're going to create a brand new story. So as a site administrator, I can access the story list by hovering over that homepage stories widget and clicking this outbound arrow icon. Okay, and after a short delay, it should take us to the stories for homepage page. There we are. And it's that same stories widget section that I, I had previously shown when we pulled it up. All of your club's stories, if they're not on the website, wherever they are, they're all stored in the story library section. But I'm working in the homepage and I want our story to, to be posted to that widget. So I'm going to click the stories widget section and then use this orange create new story button to create a brand new story. So let's go ahead and click that orange create new story button. There we are. So we're at the add new story page. Um, we can copy content from an existing story using this copy tool. I'm going to go ahead and just create a brand new story. Let's call it um, the fish fry barbecue history. Actually, I think there's already a story called that. Let's go. Uh, I'll just use the name of our webinar. So let's go change over 
uh, website content training. So I'm going to call this story change over website content training, but you can title your story uh, whatever you'd like. As soon as I click outside of that title box, the permalink for this website story on the website will be created for me. So I'm going to click outside and automatically the permalink is set. Um, so this permalink is the remaining website address visitors would be able to see the stories at. Um, we're putting the story in the homepage stories widget, so it'll appear as a link in there. Um, it'll also appear on the stories list page if we opt to include it on that list page, and I'll show you guys that as well. Uh, so we've got our permalink in. We can enter an author for the story. I'll go ahead and enter my user here, Charles Hampton. Um, if you were to assign a member as an author of the story, they'd be able to come back to the story and make further edits. Pardon me. There we are. So I'm going to select Charles Hampton as the author. And finally, we have this date and social media checkbox. The date organizes the story amongst other stories from the stories list page and in the story library. I'm going to leave it as today's date. But if you'd like this story to precede another story you had created, ideally, we would set the date to be earlier than that, than that previous story so that we're creating this new story before that story and it all lines up um, chronologically. I'm going to keep it as May 18th because we're creating the story today. Finally, there's this social media option. I'm going to check this. This social media option will include a bar of social media icons at the bottom of the story when somebody clicks the read more link from the home page or opens the full story. Um, in that social media share bar, they can click, say, the Facebook button. Their own profile in Facebook would open where they can post your story and story link on their page to share with other visitors who are viewing their own Facebook page, that member's Facebook page. Um, so do keep that in mind. It's a handy tool to get members to share your website stories, which could be projects that the club are working on or events, um, like ongoing event updates. Um, so do check that social media share bar option. Um, once it's checked, you can open up the full story and test the share button by clicking one of the icons, and we will test in our webinar. Uh, so just below those initial settings for the story, we have our story brief section, and there is also a story content section. And I know we sometimes receive the question, what's the difference between these two sections? Effectively, <clears throat> excuse me, effectively that story brief section is what is displayed in the homepage stories widget. The story content section, whatever we enter in the second box, will appear after the reader clicks a read more link to open up the story and then view the full story content. Um, you, do not, you do not need to duplicate your story brief in your story content. Um, simply the story brief appears on the homepage. If somebody clicks the read more link, the story brief and story content appear all together on the stories page. Uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, actually, before I work on the story brief and story content, I want to add a thumbnail image for the story. And to do that from the top right here, we've got our empty thumbnail box. I'm gonna click this great change link and then this edit icon. Your club's image library, the same place where, where I had showed you in the website content, that same image library will appear. From here, you can select the image you'd like for the thumbnail of the story. If you'd like to add your own image from the top of the library, we can click this green upload button. And as soon as I click that button, a folder explorer on my device opens. We should see Documents Club Runner demonstration. And from here, I can scroll down to whatever image in my device and then select it for the story. Um, let's use this Join a Project image. So I'm going to select it and then click this Open button. And as soon as I do that, it uploads the image to the library. So it will take a moment to reload, but as soon as it does, there's our new image. I'm going to double click it to select it for the thumbnail. There we are. So now the story, the story thumbnail is set. Next, let's work on the story brief. Um, I just want, I'm just going to mention some stuff about the changeover training. I'm just going to say uh, thank you all for attending our beginner website content training. Oops, content training. There we go. And I'd like to also include an image in the story brief. So this also appears on the website. I don't know if it'll look very good with the scrollable layout. If we were using the regular layout, I'm sure it'd look a little better, but I wanna include a second image in the story brief. To do that, I'm gonna use the image editor tool in the top uh, 
row of tools here. Uh, do note that this could be on a second row for your browser, depending on the monitor size. Uh, so let's go ahead, click image. And this image properties dialog appears to add an image to the story brief. We're going to click the browse server button in the top right here. There we are. And the same image library opens where we can select an image that's already been uploaded to the image library or click the green upload button and then upload another image to the image library. I'm going to cancel this. You can also create subfolders if you're looking to group your images by a project by right clicking the My Images folder from the image library, then choosing New Subfolder. I'm not going to go through all the steps here, but New Subfolder, and then you would be able to title the subfolder. And once saved, it would appear like all these other subfolders we have, uh, for example, Mickey One or KB Images or Profile Pictures. Um, so let's use Test One, the subfolder. I'm going to go ahead and click that. I see there are no images here. Let's quickly add one with that green upload button. There we are. And then using my file explorer, I'm going to go ahead and add this uh, picture, this Christmas tree picture. So I'm going to select it once and then click the blue upload button. We've uploaded the image to the test one subfolder. And then I'm going to double click the image to bring it in. Um, as soon as I add it in, I see that the width and height for this image is going to be quite large. Uh, 1980 is, is, is quite big. It'll probably fill up my monitor. Um, I'm going to add it, but we will adjust this. I also want to mention there is an alignment you can set. So you can either align it to the left or right. Um, with the image being so big, it'd be hard to see. But let's, let's get the image in the story. And I'm going to get that by clicking this green OK button. There we are. It is truly massive. Um, there is our text at the very top. And then the image looks like I now have this horizontal scroll bar. I, I want to mention while you're working on a story, you can click and drag this arrow in the bottom right to expand or, or just vertically expand the workspace you're, you're seeing. Um, so we can vertically expand it, but the image is, is, is almost unworkable with how large it is. Let's adjust its size. So I'm back in the story brief. I'm going to double click the image twice, and that brings up the same image properties box. Um, while adjusting the height and image, I'm going to make sure that this lock icon remains locked. Um, this will make sure that as we change the width, the height also changes for us. So I'm going to reduce this width by at least half. Let's bring it down to 500 width. And as soon as I enter 500, it, pardon me, the height is automatically changed for me. Let's see the update. I'm going to click this green OK button. There we are. <clears throat> so much more workable, but I still want this image to be left aligned so that this thank you for all attending appears just to the left of the image. So let's double click the image again to open up that image properties. And instead of poking with the height and width, I'm going to go to the very bottom and set an alignment to left. So let's go ahead, get that left alignment and click the green OK button. Oops. Uh, OK, I think it's on its separate line. So it's aligned to the left in that line. I would like it to be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the image and then drag it. And as I drag it, it may be hard to see, but there is my highlighted cursor just after that exclamation mark. It's probably very difficult to see, uh, but I'm going to move that that uh, cursor to the start of the thank you and then let go. And we've moved the story to the first line instead of its second line where it was aligned left. And now the text wraps, but I'm not happy with the text hugging the image. I want some space there. So let's add some padding. So I'm going to double click the image again. And this time we're going to add some horizontal space. I'm going to give it five pixels. And let's do vertical spacing as well. I'm going to give it another five pixels and click the green OK button. There we are. And now we see that the thank you is, is separated, uh, though that vertical spacing has moved the image down. We can remove that again by double clicking the image and then just highlighting that B space, removing it and clicking OK. And now they both begin on the same line. I'm not going to enter more content in the story brief. This is all I want to appear on the homepage stories widget. Let's add some content to the story content. Um, I'm just going to, uh, I would enter some lorem ipsum text, but I don't have that with me. So I'm just going to type in um, story content and then highlight that and paste it a few more times to uh, just give us some additional content that we can view when we open the story on the website. So I'm just going to enter, say, two lines worth. 
there we are. Um, and you can add up to 30,000 characters in the story content and up to 20,000 characters in the brief. Just keep that in mind. I don't think we've had many accounts reach those limits, um, but there is a limit when creating the story content and story brief. So we've got our stories brief, what we want to appear on the homepage set. We've got our content also set. So when they click read more, this is what they'll see. The last few options are here at the very bottom. We can choose to enable the comments feature. So when enabling comments, if a visitor opens the story on your club website, they must log in to be able to leave a comment. So only members or other user records can comment on the club stories. Um, and after that, any other members can post comments. There is a way from the story library to manage the comments that are posted on the website. So you can delete or remove any comments. Um, and there's also this tags feature. So from the story list built-in page, which isn't the same as the widget, uh, but from that built-in page, a list of tags will appear. And if somebody clicks the tag, any stories with those tags will automatically be um, set as well. So I'm going to enable comments just so we can see this feature. Um, I'm not going to close the comments so that people can't post, but if you'd like to close the comments, you can check this box after a few people have posted their comments, and that will prevent more comments from appearing. Um, if you were to just uncheck enable comments, the comments section would be removed from the page. So that's the difference. Uh, if you'd like to make sure no new comments are made, you can check the close comments box. And finally, I'm going to add a tag. When I click that tag drop down, you'll note a few existing tags appears. I want to see if I can find one that says training. I do see webinar. So we'll just use the webinar tag. But you can just type in a new tag. So I can go ahead and just type in the word training, press Enter. And now a new training tag has been created for the account. So we're done with our story. Let's go ahead and click this orange Save button. As soon as I click that orange Save button, you'll get this Publish Story dialog for any new story. It'll ask us if we want to post the story to the Stories widget. We started the story from that same Stories widget section, so that checkbox is checked for us. We can also post it to the Story list page. Ideally, you'd check this if you'd like it to appear on the website. I will show you guys how you can add stories to the story list page without using this publish story dialog. I'll show you guys right after here. So let's confirm this update. We want it in that homepage stories widget. It will not appear on the story list page until we move it there or copy it there, I should say. And that isn't manual. You just select it and it'll appear. Let's click this orange confirm button. Uh, sorry, before I click that button, you can opt to include the story in a few active bulletins prepared in your club account. Um, I'm not going to check these options because we're not going to be really working in the bulletins. But if somebody is taking care of the club's newsletters using the bulletins module, you can add it for them by just checking the bulletin they're working on, or they can add their own bulletin stories widget to the bulletin and then click the outbound arrow icon like we did, and then add the story um, to just that bulletins widget list. So I'm just going to uncheck this. I'll show you guys how that works uh, when we go back to the library. I'm going to confirm this update. <clears throat> There we are. It's just taking a moment to take all the content we created, make that web page for us, and then create that, that story uh, item in the Stories widget. So coming back to our Stories widget in the Story library, we've got the Changeover Website Content Training Webinar, which I created as, uh, as Charles here for May 18th. Um, to add it to the Stories list page, I'm going to click Stories list page from the library. And these are all of the stories added to the stories list page. We can add stories from the library where all of the stories are stored by clicking this blue add stories from the story library button. I click that button and automatically any missing stories appear in a list. I can check the story that I'd like to add just our demonstration story and then click this orange add selected stories button. There we are. And now the story is entered to the stories list page. If you'd like to reorder the stories for the stories list page, that's controlled by the date. So the date would need to be changed for the stories widget. It is these three icons. I'm going to leave the order as is for now. Um, let's, let's take a look at the home page to see our new changeover website story. So I'm going to open up our home page tab at the top here. And none of my updates have been posted because this page has been kept open. To refresh the page, I'm going to click this refresh icon in my browser. 
there we are. And if I scroll down, we do see our changeover website content training webinar. If you'll recall, this is our thumbnail that we added with the change and edit link. And then we've got our image that we added with the image editor tool just below. To view all of the content for the story, we can click the name of the story from this widget here. We should also be able to cl click the thumbnail image. So I'm gonna click that. And as soon as I click that, I see our thumbnail on the left, our image on uh, just to the right of the thumbnail, and then the wrapped text in our, um, pardon me, in our story brief. I'm not happy with how this looks. So let's make some changes, I guess, here. Um, but before I go back to the story editor, if we scroll down, we have our social media share bar. So if I were to click, say, the Facebook button, a new dialogue would open to ask me to log into my Facebook profile, and then I'd be able to share it on my um, on my Facebook post. And because I'm logged in, we can also leave a comment for the story. If we were not logged in, this comment checkbox would not appear. Um, let me show you guys how that would appear if we were not logged in. So I've copied the website address and using Google Chrome sort of outside of our training here, I'm gonna open up an incognito window which doesn't remember any of my login session. I'm gonna paste that same story address then click the enter key. We're back on the same story, I'm not logged in. And because I'm not logged in, we do not have the ability to enter any comments. So let's close out this incognito tab. Coming back, one last thing I wanna show you before we go back to edit this story and how it appears is that stories list page, we added it to that grouping. I have linked the stories link page uh, the built-in stories page, I should say, to our club's navigation menu. It's this news and projects item. This is the URL. It's just forward slash stories after your club's uh, uh, website URL. And it'll bring up this stories list page where we added the changeover website content training, as well as all of the other stories that were added to the stories list page. If we'd like to filter for just the stories we've tagged, we can click, say, the webinar tag, and now only the stories with the webinar tag appear. We can also say click Club Runner, and any of those stories with the Club Runner tag also appear, and we see a few demonstration stories have been added here. Let's go back. Um, I'm going to return to the member area. So I'm going to close this tab that we were originally working in. Let's just go back as, as, uh, as you would fresh. So from the home page, I'm going to click member area. I should say the story page. I'm going to click member area, and then we're going to go back to the website module in the top blue bar, then website content in the gray bar just below. Here we are. I'm going to go to the home page stories uh, link right here on the middle of the page. And again, this brings up the stories widget, the homepage stories widget. If we'd like to edit a story, we can click the story title from here and we can reorganize the story. So previously, the changeover website content training was the first story. Just to show you guys, I'm going to show that again on our homepage. If I scroll down, the changeover website content training is the first story. Let's make it the second story. So I'm going to grab those three dots just to the left of the story title. My cursor changes to that four-way arrow. And then I'm gonna slowly drag it down. And there we go, we've moved it to second. I'm gonna let go of my cursor. And now that's changed. Um, we would need to refresh the home page by going back and clicking this refresh button. But before I do that, let's make a change to the story. So I'm gonna click the story's title. And if we scroll down, I'm not happy with how it's align the text and then sort of squishes it. Let's remove the alignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to align and then go not set. So now the text appears at the bottom of the image, but I want it to appear on a whole new line. So from that bottom line, I'm gonna put my cursor at the start of thank you and then press enter. And now this will appear on its own line. Okay, let's publish this update to the story with the orange save and publish button in the bottom right. There we are. And if we go back to the home page, we should see that update when we click to open the full story. So I'm going to refresh the page. The, the website story, the changeover website story has been moved to the second story. If I click the name or thumbnail image, it opens. Um, I don't see that it's on a new line. Let's try to refresh this. Perhaps the live designer is not... Okay, it is taking just a bit here. What I'm expecting is this thank you for all of the training is, is on a whole new line just below. Let's go back and just publish again. So I'm going to go back to the member area and then change over website content training. And if I scroll down, I do see it on a new line. I'm just going to add another enter character just to make sure. 
and then save and publish. There we are. And if I go back, I'm not going to uh, hang up on this too much. We'll move on. I just want to see if we can get this on a new line. I'm going to refresh the page to check for our update. And there we go. It's moved to its 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 own line. Um, I'm not sure. I think there may have been just a slight delay in that first update. We did um, put it on its own new line in the first place. But now it appears, and we could add more spacing or remove the thumbnail image so that this bigger image is directly to the left. Um, so go ahead, poke around with the website stories. Um, you can add images or just use the thumbnail. Um, you can throw all that information in there. Before I jump away from website stories, I want to show one last thing. I'm going to go back to that stories for homepage page and edit our story. We can link content from the story brief or story content to other areas on the website. So say you'd like to include a link to your club's calendar in the story. You can say, learn more about uh, this event, I'll say, by uh, opening our calendar here. For example, so I've got my text that I'd like to link. I'm going to highlight the text I'd like to link and then click the link editor tool at the very top of the story. This link dialog appears where we can use the link type to select the type of content. I would like the built in calendar page. So I'm going to click built in, but there are many other options. Like if you guys have a speaker created or an event, um, you can link those events, but I'm going to use built-in page and then from the drop down just below i'm going to select calendar and it should appear there we are event calendar and then click the green ok button to save the link and we've saved the link to the highlighted text you can also do that for images so i'm going to do the same thing for this image i'm going to click it once then click the link editor tool and then also link this to the calendar page so i'm going to click built-in page and then choose event calendar and then click this green ok button and now we've linked the image as well. We can double check from here by double clicking the image and then checking this link tab. And here we can see the shortened URL. Um, it'll be portal.clubrunner.ca forward slash account number, then forward slash events slash calendar. And that's where the image and that text should take us. So we've created our links. Let's save and publish. And we're going to test the story one last time, and then we'll move on to homepage, download files, documents, and speaker and calendar items. So let's go back to the story. I'm going to refresh to see our updates again. There we are. We've got our linked sentence, and the image should also be linked. I do see that the image, not the thumbnail, the image in the story is linked. If I click either of these links, we're brought to the event calendar for the club's account. So we, that's how you can add links to your website stories, emails, um, widgets on the website. You would just highlight the content, click the link editor tool, and then use the link dialog to link to whichever area on the website, or you can use the URL link type to link to third-party websites. So let's go ahead and close these out. We're going to go back to the member area. There we are. Let's move on to homepage download files. And again, I'm going to use these top two menu bars, website, then website content, and then scrolling down, we can click home page download files. There we are. Do keep in mind all of these files are public. They may not appear directly on the home page, but if the visitor knows the URL for the file, they will be able to access it. So these are always public. There is a way to upload private documents in the organization module documents list, and I will go right there after we get a home page, a public home page download file uploaded. So back to our website content home page download files. To add one, I'm going to click this orange add download file button. And then this add download file for home page page appears. We can title the file. Um, I'm just going to call it uh, Rotary 2022 presidential theme. And I do have that logo on my device here. So I've got the title for the uh, file. Let's click this choose file button just below. That button may appear slightly different depending on your browser. Just keep that in mind. Um, and then from the file explorer on my device, I'm going to find that presidential logo. There it is. And then select it and click this blue upload button or open button, pardon me. And finally, there's this show in homepage option. And this option controls if the download file appears in the download files widget for the homepage, which we do not have added to the homepage. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it checked, but we'll see that this doesn't appear on the website. I'm going to save it. There we are. If I'd like to 
uh, share the link for this uh, for this download file. You can use that link editor tool when working in the email or download file. Let's open up the home page again. I, I, I expect that we don't have it on the home page, but we'll add the widget which which displays the download files to the home page. So I've opened up the home page in a new tab. If I take a quick look, there is no download file and, and that theme logo isn't here. As a site administrator, I've logged in so I can click this pencil icon to go straight to the home page designer. There we are. And from the home page designer, I'm going to use that same essentials widget category to drag and drop the home page download files onto the page. So let's go ahead, home page download files just below the club executives, but above the photo albums. There we are. So I move my cursor slowly, slowly down. And then if I let go, it's dropped into place. And we can see in the live designer that home page download file is there, Rotary 2022 presidential theme. This update isn't on the home page until we click the orange publish button in the top right here. So I'm going to click that button. And after a short delay, if we go back to the home page and then refresh the page, there we are. I've got the home page download files. And this is always public. Any visitor can click the link for the file and it appears on their browser. So that's how you can upload download files. Again, they're always public. So do be careful if you've got personal or member contact information in those files. Do not upload them as download files. Upload them as a private document. Let me take you through the steps. So I'm going to close out our home page here, returning back to the member area. This is our download files list. Let's go to the documents list. So from the top blue bar, I'm going to click organization. Then in the gray bar below, click documents. There we are. We've been brought to our private documents list. We've got a few example folders created here. Let's create a new folder. I'm going to click the blue add folder button in the top here. I'm going to call this um, May 18th document folder. Again, with most permalink fields in Club Runner, if we just click anywhere, the system will create that permalink for us. That's the URL that the folder is available at. Um, I can enter a description for the folder, um, May 18th documents uh, to be private. <coughs> Excuse me. When creating a folder, we can choose it to be a subfolder of another folder. I do want this to be a top level folder, but just to show you, you can plop that the subfolder in another folder. I want it to be top level. Let's go ahead, click the orange save button. There we are. We've got our May 18th document folder. I can add a document to it by clicking this blue add button, or I can add multiple documents with this add multiple option. I'm going to use this add multiple option. Let's go ahead and click the, the blue add multiple. And I'm brought to this upload documents page at the very top. We can select the folder. We'd like all of the folders, all of the files, I should say, to be uploaded in. And then just below, and this is quite important, is the access level. You've got the option of public. And by default, it will, it will be set to requires login. So in this case, if any visitor finds the link for any of the documents that have been uploaded to the club website, if they attempt to open up that link and it is set with this requires login access level, they will have to log in with their member credentials to view the document. If they don't have member credentials, they will be stuck on a member login screen without any further action until they successfully log in. So do keep that in mind. You can upload private documents with the organization documents module. And then this access level by default is requires login. So by default, they'll be uploaded private, but you can also make them public by selecting public. And that way, if anybody gets the URL for that document, they can view it without having to log in. So I'm going to keep it as requires login. And to add multiple files, I'm going to click this blue, uh, green, pardon me, green add files button. There we are. I'm brought to my folder explorer on my device. I can select one image at a time and then click open and then continue to do this. Um, just a trick that I'd like to share, though not inside Club Runner, if you've got your folder explorer open, you can select one image and then hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then press the last image you'd like to add in that group. So I'm going to click this first, uh, first RC in Philippines image. All of the images in between will also select. So I've got the first image, the last image, and then all of the in-between images. If I click open, it goes to uh, process those uploads. It hasn't begun because we haven't clicked the start upload button. So that's how you can select multiple folders or multiple files 
in a list. If you'd like to select just a few sort of spotily from that list, instead of selecting everything in between, you can hold down the control key on your keyboard. So I'm going to show you guys that I've selected my first image, and then I'm going to hold down the control key on my Windows device and click the second image. And now only these two images will be uploaded and not the ones in between. So if I click open, those last two images appear at the bottom of the list. To get the, full, uh, the documents uploaded, we're going to click this start upload button. And we've got a little progress bar. And once it's uploaded, it'll tell us that it's been completed. We can click OK. It'll bring us back to the documents list. And then I can click this drop down arrow for our May 18th document folder. And we can see all of the different images added to that folder. This lock icon denotes that the the document was uploaded with that requires access, uh, requires login access level. If there are some, there we are. So this one doesn't have that access and this zip file is public on the website. And so is this Seekonk RC Gulf Tornary uh, example. Okay, so that's documents. Let's carry on to speakers and event, uh, event calendar items um, and, uh, and photo albums. Actually, let's start with photo albums because it lives in the same area. So, in the top blue bar, I'm going to click website, then website content in the gray bar below to upload an album. We're going to use the homepage photo album section in the left hand menu or from that getting started page, you can click homepage photo albums. Note, uh, this is very similar to the story library, where your photo album library is a collection of all of the albums uploaded to the club's website. The photo albums widget is the photo albums widget for the homepage. So if the photo albums are added to this list using this blue add photo album from library button. These photo albums will appear on the photo albums widget. If you have that widget on the home page, there's also a built in photo albums list page similar to the stories built in page which displays um, the photo albums. So before I uh, add a new album, which I will add to our photo albums widget, I do want to show you guys that this widget is added to our home page. I'm going to go ahead, right click home and then open in a new tab. And if I go out to our homepage and scroll down past the download files, here are our photo albums. We've got the RibFest 2021. And if I go back to the member area, we can see the RibFest 2021 is here. To add, or sorry, to create your own album, we're going to click this orange create new photo album button. I'm going to title it May 18th event images. And then again, the permalink will be created for me as soon as I click outside of it. We would like this album to display on the photo albums page. I'll leave the owner empty, but the owner can come back to the album and make edits. Um, we're also going to leave the date as May 18th, and that sorts it amongst the photo albums list page in this case. And we can also include an album logo. So I'm going to quickly just throw it in um, that Apple image as my logo. There we are. Our last few options here are display social media share bar, that same story share bar, I would like to continue that. And for the photo albums settings, we can choose how it how long each slide displays. I think three seconds is too short. So let's increase this to five and set the transition time to one second. So that gives the viewer some time to read any information on the images if there is text content. And finally, there is this transition effect. I'm going to use, uh, pardon me, I'm gonna use slide left and then save this update with the orange save button. You can always return to this photo album settings page. Um, I'm gonna save this update and show you how you can come back. There we are. If I go back to our May 18th event images album, I can click this drop down arrow and then choose uh, edit properties. And then we can edit those time interval settings again or the photo album logo. Let's go back and add some images to the album. I've got my album created here. It's also in the photo album library. Just to show you guys, I'm gonna open up the library where all of the albums are. Um, I'm going to sort by date to help me get ours at the top. There we are, May 18th. I'm gonna click the title of the album and this can be done from any of these areas to open it. 
And on this page, we can click the orange upload photos button to upload photos to the album. And this works similar to the add multiple document interface. Um, there are no settings at the top, but we can click the green add files button in the bottom left here. And as soon as we do that, we can select our images. I'm gonna select, uh, say this finish to sign and then hold shift. And there are four images. And now I want a few more. I'm gonna scroll down and then hold control and select just a few more. There we are. So I've selected a handful of images. I'm going to click this open button. There we are. So we've got our list to upload them. We're going to click this start upload button. And again, we have that progress bar at the bottom right. It looks like one file is, is completing here. <clears throat> I will just monitor this. This should happen uh, much quicker. When we did this for the documents, it was much faster. So I'm not sure. OK, there we go. It's, it's made the upload. I'm not sure what the hang up was there, but we've done. We're done. And it says upload completed. OK. Coming back to the album, we can see the seven images I've added. Um, and it's set if we go to the home page. So I'm going to go back in the top uh, tab here and click home page. I do need to refresh to see my update. So I'm going to click this refresh button. There we are. And there's our May 18th event images album. If I click the album from the widget, it appears with the thumbnail in the top left and then all of the images we've added. If I click the start slideshow button, each image should display for, I believe, uh, one second we set, um, uh, or was it five? It was five seconds, pardon me, five seconds. And it's just going to go through uh, the images as we, as I let it here. So I'm just going to close this out, but that's how you can get photo albums on your member area. But do keep an eye to see if you have that photo albums widget on the homepage, um, because if it's not there, the homepage photo albums wouldn't appear. Um, and the other option would be to open up the photo albums from the built-in page, similar to that stories list page, built-in page. I've linked it here in the photo albums navigation menu. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the URL is just forward slash photo albums. But here are all of our public photo albums on the photo albums list page. So I'm going to go back to the member area. We're working in that album. I'm going to go back to the photo album library. We can add more to that list page by going photo albums list page at the top here. And I can add that May 18th. There it is. Um, these are organized by date, or at least should be. Um, OK, so that's photo albums. Um, let's carry on to speakers and calendar items. So these are outside the website module, but are still public um, to get to the calendar items and speakers, we're going to use the events module. And I see we're closing in on time. And I want to give Michael um, some time for Q&A. So I'm going to try to wrap up in eight minutes. We'll switch over to Q&A with Michael, and I'll monitor questions. And then uh, and then hopefully we wrap up by 2.15 or so. So thank you so much. I know we're going a little over, but I appreciate uh, you guys staying with us till the end. OK, so back to it. Events, then calendar items. There we are, calendar items recurring. And these calendar items aren't like uh, event planner events with registration. They're really just a way to post a note on your account's calendar. Um, so you can include any information and links in the calendar items so that if somebody clicks the calendar, they can click the calendar item and then be taken to wherever that information you've linked to or just read the information in the calendar item. Let's, let's create one. I'm going to click that orange add new calendar item button. We're going to title the calendar item um, event uh, upcoming on May 28th. Actually, I'll have this be the reminder for the fish fry event, which was created earlier. So this is our calendar item title, event upcoming on May 27th. Um, be sure to check out our check out our fish fry registration page here. And I'm going to highlight and link this text. So I'm going to start from this checkout portion of the sentence, click the link editor tool. And using the link type dialog, I'm going to select event and then select the fish fry barbecue, which was created in an earlier webinar um, in our role-based training. And we also created an event in our events-based training. But uh, we will have the recordings for those trainings out uh, shortly here. So I'm going to select the fish fry and click OK. And we've linked that that text in the calendar item to the event. Um, we can also include images in calendar items. So let's actually, I'll put the image at the very top of the calendar item. I'm going to use the same image editor tool. 
then browse server. And we should be able to find, I like that corn image, that corn barbecue image. Um, there's the beef, where's the corn? <laughs> I don't see it. I did upload it for another one. Let's just use that uh, steak image. So go ahead and there we are. I'm gonna double click it. I'm happy with the size 612 is a little big, but it'll fill up the screen nicely while leaving some white space. Let's have the alignment be left aligned and press okay. Oops, uh, actually I'm not a fan of the left line because now it's wrapped the text. So let's just not set that alignment, okay. And if I go back to my calendar item, that link is on a new line and I want it that way. I want it on a new line. So we're done with how it'll look. We want it to appear on the website. If you'd like to enter more location information about the calendar item, you can here, but do keep in mind, uh, there isn't a registration for this calendar item. It would just display um, the location with this location at, uh, information. I will use our, um, our current uh, mailing office address. Instant drive. I'm just I'm just recalling from memory here. So pardon me. I hope this this is all correct because as long as all of this address information is correct, um, the system will use Google Maps to search for the address and then display the map location for the calendar item once we have this information set. So I'm just going to make sure uh, that this is as best as I can. Um, bear with me here. I'm just confirming the. Uh, there we are, the postal code, Canadian postal code. <clears throat> there we are, I'm gonna paste it in. And I think that's all we need for the location information for the system to get the map. So I'm gonna leave that carrying on. We're gonna get the event start date for May 27th, the date of the event. Um, this, there isn't a registration associated to this. This is if they click the calendar item, they can download an ICS file, a calendar file to mark their calendars. So if you'd like to make sure that this event information matches your event, you can do that. I'm just gonna quickly throw in my dates. There we are. And we're gonna leave it at central time. Finally, uh, we can always display the event's time zone. Um, so this is to display the time zone for the event. I will check this. Um, which will show that it's Central America. And we can also set a recurrence. So say this is a recurring item, you can choose recurring and then set its recurrence, say weekly, every week on the Friday or monthly um, on the 27th day, or for example, on the second Friday of the first of every month, every one month. So it does get really in depth when you're working with recurrence. So definitely check it out. If you've got something that automatically recurs, you can set it up through here. Um, this is just one time because it's referring to an event. So I'm going to click the orange save button. There we are. And we did set it to show on the website true there. Let's go ahead and view the calendar on the website. So I'm going to use that top tab and click. There we are on the home page. I'm going to go to the same events and calendar group and click calendar. You may have a similar calendar link either in a folder or directly as a top level menu item. But in the calendar, we should see our uh, fish fry barbecue. And here it is event upcoming on May 27th. If I click this, here is our calendar item with that big barbecue image and then the link to be sure to check out our fish fry registration page. Um, it looks like some portion of the address information couldn't help Google locate it, but I can click that fish fry registration page link. And, um, oh, I was hoping the, the address here would also appear, but it looks like the address wasn't completely entered. Otherwise, we'd have had a little map appear here below. But do try to poke around that, uh, that location information, especially for events. Once that address is entered, a little map icon will appear. Um, and we've also got the, the social media share bar for, um, uh, for the event. <clears throat> okay, I just wanna quickly take a look at the content here. The last uh, item is the speakers. Let's go ahead and go back to the member area. And then in the top blue bar, I'm gonna click events, then speakers in the gray bar just below. And these are how you can post speakers to the website, similar to calendar items. There isn't a registration for them, but these speakers appear in an, in an upcoming speakers widget, similar to our stories widget. So if you guys have a speakers widget on your homepage, these are stored separately from the events in their own upcoming speakers widget. I'm just gonna add a new one. 
looks like Charles H, the user who I'm logged in, has has done a speech before. Let's let's have uh let's have another person give a speech this time. Let's have Jame Usel come back. So I'm going to click this orange "Add New Speaker" button, and our speaker is James Usel. Sure, we still need to enter a date, and to do that, I can type in the date or use this calendar icon and then select the date. Let's say they're coming in June 9th, and then we can enter a time to, to help people with the ICS files. So if they click uh, the invitation, or not an invitation, but if they click that link at the top, they can add this item to their calendar. And the topic is um, Earth Day. I don't think it's on June 9th, but we'll just use Earth Day as an example. We can add an image for the speaker with this choose file button. Do I have an apt image? Um, I don't see one. Let's just use uh, Let's just use this image of the two ladies in a hospital and uh, we can add some comments. Uh, join us on June 9th. James Usel will be speaking about saving our planets, for example. And then we have the same social media share bar. I'll leave that as yes. And finally, there's this I have received consent from this individual checkbox. This is required to add the speaker. Um, it's 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 uh, receiving consent to add a person to the database and it is required. So I'm gonna check that box and click the orange save button. There we are. And looking at our speaker list, Jay Musel is at the top because he is our most current speaker. If I go back to our calendar page, we should also see the speaker event there. So I'm gonna go back to our event page. It's still set to display this event. Let's go to the calendar. And I will need to go to next month for James. Oh, it looks like the next month, June, beginning here one, we see James there. But if I go to the next month there, James is also here. I can click the speaker item there and we can see the image I've added as well as the description and speaker name, as well as time that the speaker is coming to the club. Okay, I know I covered a lot of content for our webinar, so many different areas in the website content. I hope you guys ask great questions. I do see there's still a few um, in the questions box and Michael will be answering those live. So uh, I guess I'll pass the webinar on to Michael. I will be in the Q&A box monitoring any additional questions as they come up. So um, once you're ready, Michael, uh, you can help. There we are. All right. Thank you very much, Omar. You did cover quite a little, uh, quite a bit of information, and I hope that all of it was really helpful for everyone. I know we did get uh, a lot of good questions. Um, as Omar mentioned, I did mark a couple of them that I did want to, uh, I want, I did want to touch on during the Q and A session today. Um, so let me go ahead, and I'm going to share my screen here. Let's make sure we have the right one. There we go. So you guys should be able to see my screen. Um, that have up here. We are already logged in to our. Actually, let me double. Sorry, one second. Just want to make sure that everything is right. Yeah, there we go. So sorry about that. Um, so there was a bunch of different questions that you guys uh, did touch on. Um, I have marked a couple that, uh, to speak about right now. One, um, this is something that Omar had covered, but I did want to cover it again really quickly. Uh, this is a question from Suzanne. Uh, she asked, once a story is published, can you go back and edit it or can you can you go through and delete it? Um, Omar did touch on this very briefly, but I do want to uh, bring this up one more time just to make sure that you guys are familiar with this process. Uh, this is definitely something that you can do. So once you publish your story uh, at any point, you can always go back and you can make changes to it. So if you publish it and you find that there is an error, uh, you're not stuck. Uh, and you're uh, out of luck, you can go back and make these changes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to navigate back to the story library really quickly. Um, so we're going to go down over into our site administrator dashboard, and we're going to find the website content here uh, as well. And from here, we can go ahead and click on story library. And this will bring us the story library page that you guys are now are now super familiar with. Um, and we can go through and we can see the list of the various different stories that we do have created. So if we want to go through and edit one of these stories, uh, you have these action, this action column over here, and this is where we'll be able to interact um, with the story. So if we click on the edit action, 
this will bring us right back into the story content editor where we can go through and we can make any changes that we want uh, to uh, we want to touch on. If, for example, instead of editing it, you wanted to delete it, for example, you can go through and you can, instead of clicking on the edit button here back in the story library, you can click on this little drop down menu that's right next to it. And this will give us a couple of different options that we can take. Uh, to continue to work on our story. So we can either take a look at a preview of it if we want to, uh, if we want to, uh, if we just want to take a look at it really quickly. Um, you can also create a copy of the story. So you can go through, if you have uh, similar stories every week and you want to use one of them as a, like a baseline and go through and edit a couple of pieces of information about it. Uh, you can create a copy of the story and that will allow you to use it as a starting point and as a, for a new story. You can also choose to move a story to draft, um, which will make it so that you can continue to work on the story um, without any of the changes that you make being published to your website. Next is the display options for the story. So you can use this as a central point uh, to change where your story is appearing on the website. So you have access to the basic options of the homepage stories widget, the stories list page and the page stories, which, which is um, for like on, on custom pages, for example. Um, and then you also have all the options to choose whether it is displayed in any of your club bulletins. Um, now the bulletins aren't something that you will have covered today, but this is, you can choose to include your stories within, within your bulletins. So let me go ahead and click back. And then from here, we also now also have the option to delete our story. Um, now, if we click on this delete story option, you'll get a nice confirmation message uh, just to confirm whether or not you do want to delete your story, um, just in case you might have clicked it by accident. So if you are 100% sure you want to delete the story, you can go ahead and click on the OK option. Um, if not, you can go ahead and click Cancel. And then just as an additional note, if you do end up deleting a story accidentally, even after you've received that confirmation message, you do have access to this deleted stories. So let's go ahead and click on that really quickly. Oh, looks like we don't actually have it in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete uh, a story really quickly. Well, let's go ahead and delete. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this Miss Party story, for example. So we can go ahead and delete and we can delete this, click okay. And now if we go over to the deleted story section, you'll see it's now listed here. And if we go under the actions, we can also choose to restore it as a draft. So you don't, So if you do accidentally delete a story, you can always come to this deleted section and you will be able to restore it and display it back on your website if you would like to do that. Um, another question that we did receive, uh, we received um, some information, Another story that was a question that was asked, sorry, um, was whether you can include videos within your image library um, or in general, just on your Clubrunner website. Uh, so to confirm, uh, I mentioned this in the chat just a little bit earlier. Uh, video files are not currently supported within Clubrunner, but that doesn't mean that you can't go through and you can display store or display videos on your website. Um, this is something that we'll be going over a little bit more in depth in our advanced website content webinar that's coming up at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So if you do want more information on how to do that, uh, I would do recommend that you go through and you attend that advanced webinar. But for those of you that might not be able to attend, I will touch on this really, really quickly. So a way, so in, since videos aren't supported or the files themselves aren't supported within Clubrunner, what you can do is you can go to a third party video service platform like YouTube or Vimeo, for example, and you can log into here, upload your video to your or to your YouTube or Vimeo account. And then what we, we can go ahead and we can do what's called embedding a video. So let's go ahead and find one really quickly that we want to embed. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this. How do I log into Clubrunner video? Just for the sake of this example. We can go to the share option, and then we can go ahead and, grab and click on this embed link, and this will give us what's called an embed code. If we copy this embed code and we go back to our store library, or this can also be done in like a custom widget, for example, 
um, for those of you that do have access to the Live Designer, um, we can go ahead and we can embed this into onto our story or a custom widget. So let's go ahead and open this story up really quickly just so that we can take a look at what this might look like. And if we go into the either the story brief or the story content, we can go ahead and click the embed media um, toolbar option. And from here, we can extend that embed code that we just copied. So we can do right click paste. Or if you're on a Windows computer, you can do control, uh, the control plus V key on your keyboard. For Mac users, this will be command plus V. So once you've pasted that in, you can go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, the video has now been embedded in our story. So if we were to save and publish, um, save and publish the story, and then we go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. Let's actually just go to the home page here. We have our changeover website content training. You can see that the video is now available to be displayed on your story. If you want this to be displayed on your homepage, you can put it in the story brief, or you can put in a custom widget as well. So those are some options that are available for you. Uh, and for some other questions that we've received pretty commonly, um, Omar did mention this a little bit earlier. As you can see here, we can go through and we can comment on the stories that we've created. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's actually go ahead and we can post a comment really quickly. So let's just go ahead and say, great story, for example. And we'll go ahead and click send. And as you can see that we now have a record a comment that we've posted. And we can either choose to reply back to this comment um, for any other individuals, so we can post properly. Or if this is your own comment, you can go ahead and edit the comment um, itself. So this comment has now been edited. So there you go. So you can go through and you can you can make changes to your comments. Now, for those of you that are um, club executives or site administrators, what if someone posts something here uh, that you don't necessarily want uh, people to be able to see on your website? It's not like a nice comment. Uh, it's and you and it's you don't really want that to be shared on your story um, or on your website in general. So what you can do is you can go through and you can moderate these uh, these comments. So let's go ahead and go back into our member area. And we are still on the story library page, but if we go back to our getting started page here as well, you'll still be able to access this. Um, actually, wait, no, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm incorrect about that, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So if we go over to the libraries section on the on the left hand side, you'll have access to this stories and blogs section that's listed here, and you'll see a section that is titled comments. If we click on the comments uh, option here, this will give us a list of all of the various different comments that have been left on our on our on, on our website. So from here, we have all access to all of these different comments. If we click on the actions drop down menu, you can choose to go through and you can individually delete these comments from your website. So if you so if, say for example someone posts something um regarding the story um and they're providing some incorrect information or they're just being rude to another person on the website and you don't want that to be available for people to take a look at you can always come in here and you can delete these comments from your website so let's go ahead and put this comment here so we've just gone ahead and we've deleted the comment that we've created and if we go back to our story and refresh the page we should see that, that it is no longer being displayed. So that's how you can go through and you can moderate the uh, comments that are posted to your website, just in the event that there's something that you might not want to be displayed. And then finally, the one, one more question that I do want to go over before we run out of time here. Uh, Omar did mention um, that you can go through and you can create what's called calendar items. So he's, we've gone ahead and created a couple of different ones here. And as you can see, we have the club meeting calendar, right? which we have currently set to recur every week on Tuesday. 
If we click on this, we can see the information about that uh, individual meeting um, or that individual calendar item, I should say. But what if you have a recurring calendar item, but you want, um, but there's a specific date um, or a, sp a specific uh, meeting or a calendar item that you want to delete in that um, in that process. So you can see we have these club meetings and it goes out uh, every or every week on Tuesday. What if the, in this case, in, on the 31st here, our, our club meeting um, that we have has been canceled and we want to get rid of this individual meeting. If we go back to our, um, our calendar items page, so we can click on events in the top navigation menu, and then we can go through and click on the calendar items recurring option. If we go through and we delete this club meeting option, this will actually delete the entire calendar item itself. And it will remove every single item that is currently on that page instead of just the one that we don't want to appear. So what we can do in that case is we can go through and we can delete individual um, reoccurrences of those calendar items. The way we can do that is if we go over to the top right corner and we select the calendar view for our calendar items, this will bring us to a preview of all of the different items that we have on our calendar. And if we click on the, uh, the individual instance that we want to delete, you'll get a nice little pop-up message that, indicate, that provides you some information about that calendar item. So you have when it's occurring, how often it's recurred, where the where the event or calendar item is taking place, as well as the description of the event, the item as well. And from here, we have options to delete all of the uh, calendar items. So this will include um, every recurrence of the meeting, and we can also choose to delete the single uh, recurrence. So by clicking on this delete single option, let's go ahead and do that. You'll get this confirmation message where if we once we click OK to confirm. That individual, uh, that individual recurrence of that recurring calendar item has now been removed. And if we go back to our calendar and refresh the page, you'll see that it's now also reflected on that calendar as well. So that's how you can go through and you can remove these individual recurring calendar items um, for your club's website calendar. Let's see here. So that looks like just about all of the questions that I did want to cover during our Q&A session today, um, since we are running a little bit out of time. So with all of that said, I do want to, to wrap up the webinar, uh, webinar here. There are a few things that I do want to show you before we get going, however. One is the clubrunnersupport.com knowledge base. If you guys do have any additional questions that you might not have, we might not have been able to get to today, you can always go to the Club Runner Support Knowledge Base, where we have hundreds of different written articles and support um, and support training videos. You can go through and you can review to continue to help um, learn about how to use the Club Runner platform. So, for example, if we scroll down, we have a bunch of different help articles for the club websites here under Club Help. Um, we have help articles for those of you that might be working on a district website. Um, some more information in specific to Rotary International Integration, as well as utilizing the website's um, content and stories. So a lot of the stuff that we did cover today will be available under this website, website guides session. And if you guys want to take a look at any of the video tutorials that we have that we offer as well, you can take a look at our video and webinars system. And I know a bunch of you had been asked whether um, whether these recordings for these webinars will be posted. If you take a look back at this page um, in the in coming weeks, they will all be posted here. But for the time being, if you want to take a look at the changeover training recordings from last year, we also have these available as well. Now, if you're going through the Clipburner Support Knowledge Base, and, you, and you're not really able to find the answer to your question or any of the articles themselves aren't, don't seem to be very helpful in your case, you can always choose to reach out to our Club Runner support team and um, uh, we'll be able to go through and we can answer any questions or work through any issues that you might be running into. Um, whether it be myself, uh, Omar here, or any of our other support colleagues, we'll all be glad to help you out. If you do wanna reach out to us, 
You can go to our clubrunnersupport.com website, and in the top right corner, you'll find the Contact Us button. And from here, you can fill out this contact form with your name, email address, uh, the, and, and as well as a subject message of the, what information you're looking for. And you can also choose to include any attachments as well. So if you go ahead and send, uh, fill out this form, it'll go ahead and send an email to our support team, and we will try to respond back to, uh, back to your email as soon as we can. And then the one other thing that I did want to show off to you guys today is the clubrunnercommunity.com website. So let me go ahead and post a link to this in our, in our Zoom chat really quickly. So here we go. So that is the link to our clubrunnercommunity.com website. Let me also send one to the clubrunnersupport.com website as well. Um, but this Club Runner Community website is uh, an awesome online forums. You'll be able to come here and log in with the exact same login credentials as your um, that you use to log into your Club Runner website. And you can go through and post in the various different form threads that we have here. Whether this be in the general uh, the general section, if you have any feedback, you can post in feedback and suggestions, and you can you can go through all of these different um, these form threads, and you can discuss things with other users of the Clubrunner platform. Uh, our support team, my, myself, Omar, and everyone else on our team will also be going through and answering any questions that you might have on the or on the community as well. So this is another really great resource that you can take a look at if you're if you're stumped and you need a little bit of help. So with all of that said, um, I will be we will be wrapping up the webinar today. I hope uh, all the information that we did cover was extremely helpful helpful for or helpful for all of you. Now. Again, here is some of the information that we did cover today, so you can also if you want to contact us. In addition to that contact form that I just showed you on the support website, you can also send an email to support at clubrunner.ca. You can join our online community at clubrunnercommunity.com. And, and this is also a nice feature that I do recommend you check out is the Clubrunner mobile app. Uh, this is a nice little directory that you can download on either your iPhone or Android devices to have a directory of your club and district at the palm of your hand. Now, I do, would also recommend you guys check, check out clubrunner.com slash train for any additional uh, for additional webinars that we will be hosting throughout the rest of the week. Um, our last webinar will be concluding on, I believe, Saturday, Saturday, the 21st. So go ahead and register for all of the additional um, additional webinars that we will be hosting. And I'm sure you guys will have a great start to uh, to using Club Runner. So thank you guys again for joining us today within this website content webinar for beginners. Uh, we will also be hosting a, a more advanced session in just a little bit um, at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So I urge you guys to sign up for that as well. Thank you again. Take care, guys.